Hi, this is Steve Yates, and today I want to talk to you about color separation software for screen printers in Affinity Photo. So let's get started. Hi, today I want to talk to you about a color separation program, and this one's for Affinity Photo. Affinity Photo can be used in the iPad, on your Mac, in your windows and it's a great program i've been using it for a long long time and my only caveat was that we couldn't do color separations in it easily so i created a color separator and uh, then polished it up and now it's available to you since affinity photo was such a simple name i call it color separation ap <laughs> so I just want to give you a rough rundown today on the features of uh, color separation AP and uh, later of course we'll do a lot of tutorial videos on the uh, many aspects of the program and know that this program is evolving and uh, will evolve. Anyway, right now you can see I have made an image here that we're going to use specifically for this demo. Without further ado, I'll go ahead and get into it. This program assumes that you're starting out at 300 dpi on your image. If you're not uh, uh, familiar with how to do that, then hit the resize button over here and check right there and that'll tell you what it is, 300 dpi. And of course you can convert it to whatever. So let's go ahead and get into some of this stuff. There's a lot of uh, precept utilities including um, what I call pop colors. And pop colors basically takes an image that needs it and takes those colors and forces them into the pocketed uh, colors that we're going to separate. Uh, and you can see it did a pretty hard you know, force on these colors. There's a blue, there's a turquoise, there's a yellow, um, there's a red, and there's a purple in here. A lot of these colors won't be used. And in this particular case, we don't even need this, but I wanted to make sure that you saw it. And I'm gonna undo this get back to where we were. There's a sharpen and uh, in this case I'm not going to use it. Key lining, white key line will literally go around the whole image and put a white key line in your your image and you can see it right here. Now this image was already key lined so I'm going to undo this and you can see that our image was already key lined but what that'll do to an image that hasn't been key lined at all is it'll give you a white key line around the entire image or the entire alpha. That's the white key line. If you have any reason that you want to get rid of any of these colors, you can before you do the separation. And I'll show you. If you want to get rid of the yellow, there it is. Now your, your yellow is no longer yellow. Or uh, let's say you don't want to do a uh, turquoise for whatever reason. You can take the turquoise out. I'm going to leave all these colors, but I want to have the options here. Now the colors separation sets themselves. I have two right now. Full color simulated process for darks and for lights. Both of these are spot color separators. In the uh, dark they'll separate to 11 colors. Um, the primary secondary colors, two blacks, a highlight white, and a base. And uh, the one for lights will do all of that except for the base and the highlight white. And uh, the two blacks, one black is black and gray together and the other one is a black and a gray separately. You can also separate the individual sets themselves here and uh, this do this first in big capital letters to set that up. It sets up a layer to do that separation in. We won't get into that now uh, and these are really uh, for you to do your own calculations or whatever it is you need to do. Um, moving on down you can either make a base uh, right here or it'll make a base in the uh, simulated process for darks. While you have a base, you have ways to shape that base and do different things with it, including add separations um, and subtracting separations from and to that base and intensifying a specific color in that base. When your steps are all done, you have a separation editor which will do things like choke your sep, intensify the sep itself, cut a selected uh, separation, like say there's too much blue in the uh, turquoise. And so you highlight the blue, you can take that out of the turquoise on down the line. There's several different setups here to do that. And finally, getting to the pre-press, there's the ability to add registration marks, add them to the individual SEPs, and uh, a way to do halftones in this program. And uh, the halftones themselves are a two-step process 
this. The first one is in the seps themselves, and the second one is literally on a separate sheet. And uh, that's for people that don't have a rip. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and start a separation just to show you how well this works. And I'm gonna do the separation on dark on this particular image right here. For the sake of speed, I cut out about 15 seconds worth of video. All right, great. Now we have our seps done, and I'm going to come over here to the layers, which is where they're sent to, and you can see that all these separations are in here. You can see that this is on a dark image, that it does have a base, and it does have a highlight, and there is the highlight. To boot, we can see that it's using a black all right now. However, you can use a black and a gray, and the gray is separate. Now, for the sake of this demo, I'm going to lighten up this color a little bit so we can see navy shirt or something like that, and I'll take all the colors out so we can start going through what we've got here. Here's the base that uh, color separation AP creates for this particular um, design, and one of the first things you'll notice is that it does have an effect to it, and that effect is a color overlay and the reason why I do it this way is so we have something to actually print from so this is the printer for your base once we put on the uh, the shirt and for the sake of being able to see it I use the color overlay in the, the layer effects to give us our white and the same thing is done in the gray and in the highlight white so going on we'll go ahead and show you the yellow the turquoise the purple in this particular case there is a little bit of a purple I'm not sure that we would use it in this um, as we'd have to have so many heads to uh, be able to actually print it, but let's go ahead and move forward with it. There is no green, so we don't need that. There is a red, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off the purple to show you what the, the red's like without it. Now, there is a way later on, if you wanted to, to add the purple to the red, and that's something that you can, you can do to minimize your screens. So, moving on, there's a blue, and I'm doing a screen recording of this, so some things may take a little bit of a lag. Uh, here is your gray, and it's a regular gray. Let me pull it back up here so you can see. It's a regular gray set. If you put that together with this black, you'll see that uh, it's a clean gray and a clean black. Doing this both together, you can see that we have a, still a clean image, but you're going to have half tones in places where there's going to be a sharper black as well. That's really a uh, personal preference. I think they come out um, good depending on the line screen that you're using. Higher line screen, the better it's going to come out. The lower line screen, you're going to have a, a dotty kind of an image. So anyway, going back, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the shirt color, the base, the yellow, turquoise, purple, red, blue, and this black right here. And then, of course, the highlight white. And now you have a really, really good image to separate. I'm doing this right now on an iPad. So we can check out the individual steps. We've already looked at the uh, base. And by the way, this could be done on a white image right here without the base. So I'll go ahead and pull out all these colors so you can see them individually. So here is your, your yellow, and uh, if I, using the color overlay and the effects, layer effects, I can make it black so you can see the actual separation and what you'd be burning. And this is the separation in grayscale. If I pull up here, you'll see it's in grayscale. So I'm going to get out of this, go to the next one. The next one is turquoise and purple. The green, there's no green hues in the image, so we're not going to use it. Here's the red. You can see how the red interacts with colors next to it in the hue, like the yellow, and uh, where you have some of these body lines that are actually represented in the red against the yellow. And if I away the red, you can see that you have a uh, solid or a near solid underneath, and uh, that's what you've got there. So that's the red. Here is the blue, and uh, for the sake of showing you the same thing, Next to the blue is the turquoise, and you can see how the blue is working against the turquoise and vice versa. So I'll back up on that. And I've already shown you the gray and the black by itself, and then off on that, and the black all, meaning the black and the gray. And of course, here is your highlight white uh, represented in black as you would actually print it. So separations in your layers. And by the way, these, these layer separations are generated from calculations of the channels themselves in Affinity Photo. It's a little bit different way to do it. In fact, it's a lot different way to do it than we do it in Photoshop. But having said that, the calculations come out very clean. Probably the cleanest way that I've ever done it. 
actually floored by how well this program does this. The only caveat to this program, and especially on the iPad, is that it's a little slow when it goes through the process. I think the separations actually take under a minute on my iPad. This is a uh, second generation 2017 iPad Pro. I'm sure the newer ones are way faster, but it at least gives you an idea of what's going on and what's possible now with your Affinity Photo. If you're a screen printer, this is a huge thing. If you're a uh, iPad owner, and by the way, this doesn't just work on the iPad, it works also on Mac and Windows versions of Affinity Photo. It's a set of macros. It's been tested as a press time in uh, the iPad and Windows versions. I'm going to show you the blue in the pre-press. And uh, I won't get into too much about registration marks or anything like that, but I will show you that uh, how to do the halftone. While you're doing a halftone in the actual separation itself, the separation file with all of the layers, hit halftone step one. And what this will do is will create a layer ready to go to the halftone separation. And it creates this file right here. Copy this, and then it's, if you knew from Flipboard, it, up it'll come. Okay, moving on, we're gonna do a 22 and a half degree halftone at 45 line per inch version of this. The halftones have been calibrated to 600 DPI. And there it is, it's done. And as you can see, it's been halftoned. This halftone is ready for print. Print this, get it on your, uh, your film, and go burn the screen and you're good to go. And you have just done your color separations right next to the press so the pressman can see it. You can do it you can do it on a bus, on a train, on an airplane, or whatever, but you don't need to do it on your PC or your Mac. You can do it on your iPad. Besides that, you can now do it in Affinity Photo itself. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me some comments below. This program is available in the links below. Thanks again, and we will talk to you soon.